we, we got to this point here where we were just looking at the what is. You know, this is a statement of what is. The galaxy, the solar system, the atmosphere, the bodies, these are all there. They can't be disputed. It's real, bottom line. And it's really just this pit that we can see about the elements that are involved and how Steiner, the name Steiner, gives those activities. And so, in the course, of course, he talks about the planets. And, you know, he is talking about the planets as real things. And, and so, we've, we've got to get it, that, that it really is, uh, you know, whatever theory, philosophy, or belief you want to put around all this story, the reality is that we are in an electromagnetic environment and that that electromagnetic environment is interactive with each other at all times. <laughs> there is no boundary here. And so um, once we really get that, then things like um, intuition or telepathy or these things, they, they're, they're almost a given because I'm sitting here generating an electric pulse and I'm beaming that out and all you guys are getting it. Your fields are just getting this vibe, and and so it's just you know vibration, and, and and so there isn't any boundary, and and we I think in modern life tend to like these boundaries, and they just don't exist. So um, these are these um, it's it's a big question in biodynamics. It's unresolved, basically because of the sort of murkiness of the third lecture about these elements and how each of these activities are working through these elements. And so there's conversations that go on all the time about is the carrier of the spirit actually carbon? Is it sulfur? Or is it hydrogen? And, and this is you know, an ongoing sort of conversation, but obviously out of this reality we can see that this carrier of uh, the spirit is hydrogen. And um, these are various quotes that I've found through the medical lectures. One comment I didn't really emphasize strongly enough this morning was that um, in many ways the agriculture course sh should be seen as part of the medical literature, the anthroposophical medical literature. And um, Rudolf Steiner initially wanted the agriculture uh, course to go under the uh, control or influence or whatever of Eda Wagner, who was the head of the medical section, and um, she just said she's too busy, can't do it. So it went to the natural science section, and so it has a path of development based upon that. So there was this definite statement of its relationship to the medical lectures, which were given essentially from 1920 through until 1924. And it's very similar subject matter, and, and there's all sorts of agricultural references throughout them. And I think um, not only does it help to clarify uh, what is said in the agriculture course, it broadens it out and, and really gives a fantastic sort of context to get a bigger picture. All of these lectures are on, on uh, the internet for free. There's a website, I think, called anthromed.org, maybe. And it's just got all of them there. There's a list of like 20 different lecture series. And so they're all available. And um, they're a lot easier to understand than the agriculture course. I think a big point about the agriculture course is that Rudolf Steiner was quite sick when he gave that course. And there was really even a question of whether he was going to be able to deliver it because he was quite ill. And, and that's my sense of the course is he did his best to get the information there. And so it's a, it's a, you know, it's not as clear as it could be. So anyway, when we just have a look at some of these things out of the uh, medical lectures here, there's some fairly clear statements here about the way in which the spirit is carried in hydrogen and so on. Here's this quote here about the composition of the external environment is such that it furnishes the ratio for the connections between these energetic activities. And you know, this this is quite a statement. That, that it's really linking this energetic activity to the physical realm. It's no, there's no belief here, you know, it's, it's a reality. 
and um, uh, these are just similar. But what, what he makes very clear in this statement here is, is that um, in addition, sulfur, as so to speak, as a homeopathic agent in the operations of the other four. And he points out here, uh, sulfur is this omnipresent mediator between these four main elements. And, and so this is the image that we get of sulfur. It's like oil, that we've got these four activities that are taking place and that the sulfur acts as the oil to let them run together. Now, I'm not quite sure where I came across this image, but um, one of the images I have of this is that, that when these activities actually don't have enough sulfur, these, the, these uh, major bodies get stuck. And this is where we can see autism showing up in their stuckness. Whereas when we've got too much sulfur going on, they get very slippery and we get hysteria. And so, so it's, it's this sort of interplay between these two poles that we can see, and it's really the sulfur that allows this to work. Now this gives us an image of what's happening with sulfur in the agricultural organism, you know, that we need sulfur to actually facilitate processes, that we know that it is at the seat of most biological, um, you know, uh, biochemical processes, that it's this facilitator of life and, and biology. So, so this, this sort of helps to clarify that third lecture, basically.